Okay, so this is going to be our quick review of World History 2, and we're just going to start at the Renaissance and work our way across. So we begin the course with the Renaissance, which is based on Greek and Roman ideas and the emphasis on humanism, which is the focus on individuals. Key people we might want to know, Michelangelo, who does the uh, Statue of David and also the Sistine Chapel with the creation of Adam. Erasmus, remember him, he's one of the best examples of a humanist. So Erasmus wrote the praise of folly starting to question the church. Gutenberg is super important to this time period because it's his ideas that are leading to the uh, spread of, his printing press leads to the spreading of Renaissance and Reformation ideas. He also helps to increase literacy. Now the Renaissance helps lead to the Reformation. The Reformation is when people begin to question the Catholic Church. Martin Luther is the leader of this. Mr. Martin Luther wrote the 95 Theses. Sorry, it's not super clear. It's a little fuzzy. I took a picture of the review we did on the board. John Calvin is also super important. Both of these guys are saying that the Bible is the ultimate authority, not the Pope. Uh, both of them are against indulgences, especially Martin Luther, which is, remember, when you pay uh, to not have to go to purgatory. Additionally, uh, John Calvin specifically is uh, known for coming up with predestination, which is that God has already determined, predetermined who is going to be uh, saved. Also, don't keep in mind, you should remember King Henry the Eighth, who is the one who was divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. Now, Henry the Eighth had six sorry wives. Some might say I ruined their lives. So remember, he starts the Anglican Church because the Pope won't give him a divorce. He is important because he puts himself at the head of the church, and it takes away power from the Catholic Church because now he is a Protestant like the rest of these guys. Remember, his daughter Elizabeth is going to promote religious toleration and support the Anglican Church. She's going to make... Um, herself as well, the head of the Anglican Church. All right, we'll move on to global age. Uh, global age is exploration. Remember your causes, God, glory, gold. Remember that the colonies are going to copy their parent country. A couple of people to remember. Cortez conquers the Aztecs. Pizarro conquers the Inca Empire. They're both Spanish. Magellan is Portuguese. He circumnavigates, goes around the world. Sir Francis Drake is the first Englishman to circumnavigate the world. But, of course, Vasco da Gama is super important. Remember, Vasco da Gama goes down around the tip of Africa to India, and he sets up what will become colonies and make Portugal very rich. Remember that Prince Henry is the one funding these uh, voyages. He himself never goes, but he's doing lots of funding of that. Look over your charts of the Columbian Exchange. And also look over your chart of the triangular trade. Our global empires. Remember Amy, Aztec, Mayas, Incas. Remember the Incas are in South America. Remember that they're all getting conquered. And that's going to bring money to the Spanish Empire. And it's going to kill these kind of civilizations in the Americas. The Ottomans are located in Turkey. They spread into Europe and to North Africa. Their capital is Istanbul, not Constantinople. It's at the crossroads of Europe and Asia. They are a Muslim empire, uh, one of the gunpowder empires. The Mughals are also Muslim. They're located in India. They bring Islam with them because, remember, the people in India are predominantly Hindu. China and Japan, I don't think we'll see a whole lot on this section about them, but just remember they both wanted to keep foreigners out. China specifically sets up enclaves to keep, um, like, I think enclosed. They only gave them certain cities that people could trade in. All right, let's move on. Now we're at the scientific revolution. So the Renaissance inspires us to question things, just like the Reformation does. William Harvey, the heart, circulation, of the blood. Remember, we're using reason and logic. No longer are we basing things on superstition and belief uh, in the church, but we're actually using reason and logic. Uh, Kepler does planetary motion. Uh, Copernicus, the heliocentric theory, the heliocentric universe. The Enlightenment continues these ideas. We're using reason and logic now applied to government and people's actions. Locke, the lover, believes in natural rights. He thinks democracy is the best type of government. Montesquieu, three syllables, separation of powers, the 
three branches of government that we see in the Constitution. Hobbes, Thomas Hobbes, he's the hater. He believes people are naturally evil. Therefore, we have to have an absolute monarchy to keep us straight and focused. Think about the French Revolution, how chaotic it was. Then comes Napoleon and brings back order. That case, Hobbes is right. Locke is right in the case of the American Revolution where we set up a democracy. Voltaire gives us a voice, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of religion. Remember, the novel is very popular during this time period. Cervantes is uh, the one who was famous for writing Don Quixote, a popular novel. Maybe you might see that piece of art, artwork by um, Eugene Delacroix with the uh, lady leading liberty. Her dress is torn and she's carrying the French flag. Which leads us to our revolutions. We're kind of putting these Enlightenment ideas into action. We have the uh, absolute monarchs like Louis the Fourteenth, XIV. He's French. He builds the Palace of Versailles and he rules for 72 years. He's also known as the Sun King. Remember, absolute monarchs, divine right. They get their authority from God. Um, they have total power. Peter the Great wants to westernize Russia. So we have the English Civil War, Charles I, who's abusing his power. He's an absolute monarch versus Parliament, led by Oliver Cromwell. What's the effect, the ultimate result? The Glorious Revolution, led by William and Mary. What happens? They end absolute monarchs. Charles loses his head, and they say that Parliament is supreme, establishing a constitutional monarchy. The French Revolution is inspired by the American Revolution and the Enlightenment. Remember that the American Revolution put Enlightenment ideas into action. It starts with the storming of the Bastille and uh, the reign of terrors where it's really horrible in the middle. And then what you need to know is it, of course, ends with Napoleon. All right, moving right along. The Industrial Revolution starts in England, starts in the textile industry because they have lots of natural resources. Know some of the revolutionary uh, guys' inventions. Uh, Whitney, Eli Whitney, cotton gin, Bessemer, the steel process, Jenner, smallpox vaccine, unions and strikes, collective bargaining, all to make working conditions better. Industrial Revolution ultimately leads to what? It leads to imperialism because they need uh, resources to uh, make goods in these uh, factories. They also need markets to sell their goods. So when one country seeks to dominate another, that is imperialism. The responses to imperialism, the Opium War in China, the Boxer Rebellion in China, the Sepoy Rebellion in uh, India. I don't think you'll see a whole lot about imperialism. Do remember that political cartoon we looked at of Cecil Rhodes like dragged across Africa. Nationalism, huge during this time period because of those liberal ideas. Remember liberalism, wanting democracy, civil rights. Nationalism is wanting people of the same language and culture to be together. So in Italy, in the north, we got Cavour, Garibaldi in the south with the red shirts, guerrilla warfare. Germany, united by Bismarck, real politic. In South America, Boulevard, Toussaint Louverture, that name we love to hate, he's in Haiti. Uh, we also had Hidalgo in Mexico. Speaking of other ones, Gandhi in India using the nonviolence, Mandela, South Africa, apartheid. Remember, apartheid is that segregation. Genocide, let's just quickly review them. Remember, it's when you're trying to wipe out a group of people. The Holocaust, World War II, wiping out the Jews. Cambodia, Pol Pot, he kills 20% of the population, killing Buddhist monks, intellectuals, anybody challenging him. Armenian Genocide, happens in the Ottoman Empire, World War I. Rwandan Genocide, with between the Hutus and the Tutsis in Africa, 1990s. Also in the 1990s, Yugoslavia and Europe, the Bosnians and the Serbs. Look at the map that we did in our packet. All right, World War I, U.S. President Wilson, Germany has Kaiser Wilhelm II. We know our causes. The catalyst is our key thing, assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand by the Bosnian nationalists. Remember the outcomes of the Treaty of Versailles? Germany is angry. They lose land. They lose the military. They have to pay money, and they have to take the blame for the war. New countries are created. Empires are ended. The League of Nations is placed in charge of mandates. The Russian Revolution also happens during World War I. Lenin is leading the revolution, Lenin and the Bolsheviks. All right, World War I is a cause of World War II. So we have aggression of the Axis powers and appeasement of the Allied powers. The Axis powers, remember that Germany invades Poland, that officially starts the war. Japan invades China and um, uh, Manchuria and Korea. And Mussolini and Hitler are fascists, leading Italy and Germany respectively. Remember Tojo's in Japan. 
Churchill in charge of Britain, Stalin. He makes us sad. He's the second leader, the Great Purges, the five year plans. FDR, first president of the U.S. during World War II. Truman is the last president of the U.S. during World War II. Truman is the one who drops the bombs. Remember, we need to know Truman for the Cold War II. Starts with the German invasion of Poland, ends with the dropping of the atomic bomb. D Day is our other big battle, storming the beaches of Normandy, led by Eisenhower. Outcomes of the war, the United Nations is formed, replacing the League of Nations. The UN Declaration of Human Rights by Eleanor Roosevelt. NATO and Warsaw are formed. The Nuremberg Trials to punish the Nazis. The Marshall Plan to rebuild Europe. And the creation of Israel, a homeland for the Jews. The Cold War happens. U.S. versus the Soviet Union. Capitalism versus communism. Remember, America thinks communism is a great evil. The Iron Curtain has been drawn across Europe. We're trying to contain it. That's the Truman Doctrine. Uh, we want to build up our weapons to deter, to prevent any kind of attacks because we both have nuclear weapons. It's mutual destruction. The Korean War, Vietnam War, the Cuban Missile Crisis, all examples. Remember that it ends with the fall of the Berlin Wall. Don't forget during this time period that in China, Mao Zedong, or Mao as you like to call him, needless to say, he's taking over China. All right, let's go over some modern-day people we might want to keep in mind. All right, so we've got Margaret Thatcher, who is in Britain. She is an ally of the U.S. Capitalism fights the war in the Falklands. Golda Meir is in Israel, again, an ally of the U.S., fights the Yom Kippur War. Gamal Abdel Nasser in Egypt, ally of the Soviet Union, nationalizes the Suez Canal. Indira Gandhi builds a nuclear program in India, allies with the Soviet Union. Mikhail Gorbachev, the last leader of the Soviet Union, remember LSG, uh, Lenin, Stalin, Gorbachev. Gorbachev does glasnost and perestroika. Remember, he is compared to Deng Xiaoping in China, who rules after Mao, because Jing, Deng Xiaoping brings in capitalism. Terrorism today, because of religious extremism, is the main cause. 9-11, suicide bombings are all examples of that. Because of terrorism, we have more security and surveillance. Remember, refugees are people who are living outside of their home country. We also uh, see um, groups of people of conflicts, the Kurds, the Arabs and Israelis in Ireland, the Catholics and the Protestants. Uh, the EU and NAFTA are examples of trade organizations. Developed versus developing countries, economic status. Developed is the example of the USA. Okay, this is, again, quick, fast review, just trying to hit the highlights. All right, now, religions. You guys are pretty good on this, but we'll just hit it real quick. Judaism, Christianity, Islam, they are our monotheistic religions. The, um, and Hinduism, think caste system. India, Buddhism, think Eightfold Path, Four Noble Truths, they're in East Asia, in China, Vietnam, Cambodia, Japan. Uh, Islam, remember the M's, Muhammad, Mosque, Mecca, Medina, the five pillars, faith, prayer, alms, fasting, pilgrimage, the Quran, uh, and remember they're in the Middle East. Christianity today, they're going to be, you know, most of the world, uh, the Bible, and Judaism, remember Israel, and the Torah. Now, I have gone over this all super fast. Feel free to go back and watch it again. Uh, just kind of keep all these things in mind when you're thinking about kind of what you need to know. Um, this is kind of the, 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 the crux of it all, the Renaissance to the Reformation to, um, you know, the empires and exploration, which then leads to the scientific revolution enlightenment. Thinking about keeping things in order. Remember, it's the English Civil War, then the American Civil War, then the French Revolution, then your, like, Latin American Revolution, then the Industrial Revolution. Uh, I've done this chronologically. So you can kind of see the gist. The genocides we kind of stuck in there because they kind of happen during uh, all of these different events. Good luck. You've got this. I know you can do it. Don't forget to be awesome. And all you got to get is 10 more questions and you got it.